Ah, salutations, respected viewers. It's George from Ireland. So uh, thanks for tuning in. Um, so this is a video about the Society of King Charles the Martyr being a very pertinent um, day to make it because, of course, it was 371 years ago today that uh, Charles the First, King of Ireland, uh, was killed. He was a, a King of Scots and, incidentally, King of England. Uh, he also styled himself King of France, though he never ruled an inch of French soil. Um, anyway, so this is the organisation which was set up in 1894 to uh, perpetuate um, his memory and to uphold uh, the Catholic tradition within the Church of England. I'm not an Anglican. I'm actually from a, from a Roman Catholic background, but uh, anyone can join it. There are a few um, Roman Catholics in it as opposed to Anglo-Catholics. An Anglo-Catholic is someone who says they practice the Catholic faith within the Church of England and recognise the British monarch as the supreme governor of the Church of England under God, um, rather than the Pope. Um, anyway, so uh, the, the I went to a service, it was at the Banqueting House um, in London on Whitehall. That's a street, because Whitehall Palace stood on that site till it burnt down in an accidental fire in 1698. Um, so they um, hold a brief service outside the Banqueting House, under the the bust of um, the martyr king, uh, he was a uh, he was canonized by the Church of England after the restoration of the monarch in 1660. He's the only saint to have been created by the Church of England, um, uh, and the Bishop of London, Creton, way back in, in about 1900, said that uh, the king was offered his life if he would agree to a Presbyterian form of government in the Church of England, and he refused. And that he saved these things for the future, and indeed they were restored. I mean, I, I'm not, I've not seen in any of the chronicles anything about um, the king being offered his life if he agreed to all this. I thought it was a more, more sort of political demand, or plus he was, he was found guilty of, of various crimes and people were, were executed for petty crimes under him, such as just stealing a, a few shillings. So it seemed astonishing that he would have his life spared. And, you know, he, he could have ruled decently. He could have made peace much earlier. When he was captured, they gave him his life. When you surrender, you're begging for your life. Okay, we won't kill you. If you escape, then the all bets are off. You can be killed. Not only that, he restarted the conflict, negotiating in bad faith with the English um, parliamentarians, maintaining a secret correspondence with the Scots Covenanters to try and restart the conflict, which he, which he eventually did. Um, so that's him. Not someone I have a lot of sympathy for. An absolute ninny. Uh, was that was fairly good to us in Ireland because... You know, the Catholic majority were, were left left unmolested. He just wanted taxation. But it uh, was dreadful in England and Scotland. No other monarch provoked such a big, uh, such a big reaction. So I arrived at about, um, about uh, half past um, uh, 11. And um, only about um, quarter to 11, the service began outside the main entrance to the banqueting house. And we tried to squeeze in that area with a bit of a fence around it. I should have stayed outside that and filmed inside it because I couldn't film without disturbing people. Um, and that was that. And about nine out of ten people there were male, um, mostly elderly. I was one of the youngest ones there. So there lots of the, those, the, the youngsters were there were young fogies. That's to say, young men in a hurry to be elderly men. And uh, about 30 clergy were there, but often wearing the most anachronistic form of... of um, uh, clerical dress. Their clericals were like soutanes, shovel hats, berettas and so on. The sort of thing that the that the uh, Roman Catholic clergy haven't worn in 60 years. But these Anglican clergymen were wearing cassocks and whatnot and surpluses. Um, so a bit of a bit of a bit of high camp. Um, and uh, most people dress up to the nines wearing tail suits and so on. I must be the most underdressed person there because I'm, I'm a scruff and a tramp as I'm sure you've observed. So uh, then, a bit after 12, upstairs, the thing is there's no audio system. There was no, they had to help the clergyman project his voice. And then the, the acoustics are actually rather good once we we're in the banqueting hall, that was fine. And there was a bit of a procession holding the, the cross aloft and some, I'm not sure what to call it, cloth with images on it, um, of the olive branch and the axe and uh, the crown, since he held out the olive branch, but he was axed and whatnot. Um, and it's a splendid place, very closely associated with him, not just because that's where he went to uh, meet his death with the uttermost fortitude. Um, he was very composed, they say, before he went out to meet his doom. Um, but also he'd spent many a happy hour there, 
celebrating banquets. And that's why these these Dutch old masters on the ceiling, Van Eyck and Van Dijk, I've only been to that building once before. There are mirrors down here so you can look and see the uh, uh, magnificent images there that the choir was canticling blissfully. So it really was a most sublime service for the repose of the soul of Charles, who most nobly laid down his life for his faith. Charles the king who chose to die rather than the faith deny. Okay, royal Charles who chose to die rather than the faith deny, forfeiting his kingly pride for the sake of Jesus' bride. Lovingly his praise we sing, England's martyr, England's king. Mirror of fair courtesy, flower of wedded chastity, humble follower day by day of the church's holy way. Lovingly his praise we sing, England's martyr, England's king. All the way of death he trod for the glory of his God, and his dying dignity made a bright epiphany. Lovingly his praise we sing, England's martyr, England's king. Bless we God the three in one, for all faithful neath the sun, for the faithful gone before, and fun for those who our country bore. Chiefly him whose praise we sing, England's martyr, England's king. Um, so uh, that, that's this uh, hymn here. And um, there were even some prayers in Latin and so on. That's stratospherically high Anglican, more Catholics than the more Catholic than the Catholics. And there was a, an American clergyman from North Carolina who's chairman of the Society of King Charles the Martyr uh, who came over, who, who preached the sermon. And um, most eloquent it was. He spoke with um, poise and grace. Uh, projected his, his, his uh, voice most pleasingly, and his cadences uh, were very gentle upon the ear. Um, it was uh, logical and highly persuasive, although I'm still one, not one who's convinced me. Charles the uh, King, Charles the I was very unwise, uh, ruled more or less as an absolute monarch, got into a war unnecessarily, which he proceeded to lose, um, tried to impose his... Uh, religious prejudices on people very unwillingly which is was um would not listen to reason would not hearken to the voice of the people vox populi vox dei um oh yeah for example they sang sanctus 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 dominus deus sabaoth pleni sunt chile et terrae gloria tua hosanna in excelsis benedictus qui venit in nomine domine hosanna in excelsis as in holy 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 God of the hosts, the heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So it helps if you happen to know it um, in English. So uh, that was that. And, and there's, there's this, uh, another very long um, hymn um, in Latin. So they also uh, commemorate his, his, the restoration in May, May the 19th, 1660, when Charles II came back after the declaration of Breda and Apple Oak Day, because I think it was 1652, Charles II came back, and I think with, with Scott's Covenant to help, um, staged to come back in England, fought and lost the Battle of Worcester, and had to hide out. I can't remember which family it was in the West Midlands, hid him at Boscobel House. The parliamentarians were searching for Charles Stuart, two yards high, as it says in six foot high, and that height was well above average height in those days, stood out like a sore thumb and had to climb a tree to avoid being caught, which is why I see many, many, many pubs called the, the, the Royal Oak. And you'd be able to have an oak tree, and if you look carefully, you'll see a face hiding in the, in, in the leaves, because the oak tree saved its life. I think it still stands. Um, so uh, that's that, yeah, look up, there, there, there it is, the website for the Society of King Charles the Martyr. And this video is certainly not made on their behalf. Uh, so it's a fascinating historical phenomenon that people choose to uh, commemorate him. There's a rather unworthy monarch just so along afterwards. And there are two Orthodox clergy there, certainly. I think I might come along a bit later next time and try and discreetly film from the back. No one actually said I couldn't join the Mass. Perhaps I just should have done anyway. But there was this light coming out of my camera and I couldn't switch it off. I think it's because I was trying to film the floor, first of all, see it was going OK. But then there was a bit dark, so the light automatically comes on. Um, so if you do have to be in London around the 30th of, of um, uh, January, go to it. And I've seen some footage from a British Pathé films in the 1920s and 30s. There's a procession from um, another church, St. Martin in the Fields, to the statue of King Charles I, which is on um, 
the big end of Whitehall Street where it meets Trafalgar Square is a question statue, and that statue, incidentally, is where all distance from London are measured from. Kilometre zero is a Moscow equivalent. So um, I've fulfilled a lifetime ambition, although actually um, left halfway through. But uh, remember the, the motto of uh, the Society of King Charles the Martyr, remember. That's it, remember. Okay, so well, I did remember him. All right, so make sure you subscribe and um, please uh, book online lessons with me in um, English literature or English as a foreign language, uh, history, geography, politics, religious studies. Uh, I can't think what else. Law, because I have a law degree. Book me as your tour guide in London. Get me to help you with dissertations, essays, theses, uh, all sorts of articles, elocution or interview preparation. Get my advice about studying at boarding school or university in the United Kingdom or the Republic of Ireland and book me as your tour guide in London. Thank you so much for your liberality on PayPal and on Patreon. Toodaloo.